It's time for Florida State football. This is Inside Seminole Football. Brought to you by the Florida Lottery. Over 30 billion and counting to education. Just imagine. The energy saving conservation programs of Tico People's Gas. Real Coca-Cola taste with zero sugar and zero calories. Coca-Cola Zero Sugar, taste the feeling. And by Nick's Toggery, provider of Coach Taggart's wardrobe. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Inside Seminole Football. Tom Block along with Coach Willie Taggart. And Coach, obviously not the way you wanted to start the season against Virginia Tech in terms of the performance and the result. Uh, as you reflect back and you've had a chance to, to, to look at the tape, uh, you know, what are your impressions in, in light of the 24-3 setback? Well, I thought um, just looking at the game and um, as bad as we played, we still had a chance to win the ball game. And, and um, you look at the mistakes we, we made, oh, they were all on us, you know. and the turnovers, it was not like there was something they did to create those. It was more what we did. And then penalties, again, that's on us. And when you're in the red zone four times and you only <clears throat> get a field goal, it's not good football against a good football team. So uh, we got to do a better job um, executing plays and, and as coaches putting our guys in, in good position to make plays. It felt like watching the way the game unfolded, uh, that the defense found its sea legs after the opening drive or two, and the offense sort of did too, and you moved the ball, but then just bogged down in the red zone. And uh, just observing, it, it seemed as if that one play could have been made. It might have just had everybody relax a little bit and go from there. Absolutely, and I, th I thought with a, with a young team, um, so many guys were out there trying to make a play instead of, instead of making the right play, and that got us. And, and I think being behind caused that a lot, and our guys got to understand that got to continue to play the game and uh, make the play that they're supposed to make. Well, one of the things, you don't know how the team is going to respond when adversity hits until you face that situation. And, uh, you know, now this is a teachable moment as you go forward. Absolutely. And, and I learned a lot about our football team in this first game. It's the first time we've all been to battle together. And, and now we just got to um, regroup, learn from our mistakes, and make sure we don't make those again. We will get to the highlights from this game, Florida State's opener against Virginia Tech. When we come back, stay with us here on Inside Seminole Football. Welcome back, Coach. It was a terrific atmosphere for this Monday night stage. I know you had to be pleased with this. It, it, it seemed as if the pregame, everybody was pumped and, and ready for this moment to start the start the new era. They were, and uh, again, unbelievable atmosphere. And, and again, I apologize to all of our fans for showing up and for us performing the way that we did. But um, really, really was impressed with that atmosphere, and, and that's how it should be. And, and again, we got to learn to play a lot better in that atmosphere, and we should. What was your message to the team uh, before they came out to take the field? Well, I just told them, I mean, you don't get opportunities like this often. You know, this is what they all signed up for, to be in a prime time game, national TV, uh, at home, conference game. Um, you don't you can't ask for much better than that. You know, you got to go out and take advantage of the opportunities. And unfortunately, uh, we didn't we didn't do that. As a result, uh, Virginia Tech got the lead and got the momentum in the first half. Let's take a look at the uh, first half highlights and then we'll react to, uh, to what happened in the first two quarters of play. Ready to go and Logan Tyler puts that left toe to leather and this game is underway. Deep kick into the end zone, three yards deep and starting to bring it out was Farley and H back in there as well as a running back. Handoff on a draw play, up the gut, big gain to the 50, to the 45, tripped up at the 33 yard line. Yard line moving right. Here's the snap, play action, fake dropping to the pass is caught it's a little too tall. Big pressure coming after the quarterback and Brian Burns got into the grill of quarterback Josh Jackson. In fact, Jackson forces it to get that ball away and Pokies, here's the snap. They fake the J, run the Jets sweep to the left side inside the 12 yard line. A first down would be. There's a safety chasing his dropping back to throw Jack. Josh Jackson's pass to all favorite toward the end zone. On ball, touchdown, Virginia Tech. Levante Taylor, who did not surrender a touchdown last year, beaten on that fade route by Damon Hazelton. The Hokies. Here is the snap out of the gun. Francois' first pass of the season. Throws it down the middle. Caught ball. First down of the 45 yard line. Big catch by Keith Gavin. And the nose are near midfield as Gavin polishes off a tackler. Back to the 43 yard line. The snap. Here's a jet sweep. Run the ball. Daquan Murray going to be tackled for a loss back at the. 
34-yard line. Did he fumble the ball? Hokies think he did. The Hokies think Daquan Murray fumbled the ball, and he did. They lead 7-0. Here's the snap. They hand the ball off and run to the left side. Daylight to the 30. Down the center of the number 20. The 15-yard line to the 13-yard line. Deshaun McLeese from the 12. Here's the snap. High snap. Pass to the fade route on the far side of the field. It is caught ball, but out of bounds. Incomplete. 18-yard line, a 29-yard attempt. The spot is good. The kick is airborne. It is long enough, and the Virginia Tech Hokies make us pay for a fumble by Nyquan Murray. Clock at 7.13 to go in the first quarter. Knowles down. Here's the snap. Inside play action fake. Dropping back to throw. DeAndre Francois throws a rope down. Then it's incomplete. Threw it a little too low to be caught. Out of the gun. Here's the snap. Francois high snap. Drops back to throw. Looks fires to the right side. So receiver fell down. Did he make the catch? I think he did. And Ontario Wilson, 27, not 29. And that's a huge third down conversion. Trail 10 to nothing. Here's the snap. Hand off to Jock West. Patrick runs to the left side. Got a blocker in front. And it's in the 45 to the 50 yard line. Key block by DeAndre Francois. On a little handoff out of the shotgun to big running back, senior Jacquez Patrick from the 30. Here it is. Hands the ball off on a draw play. Up the gut goes Cam Akers. Keeps his balance to the 42. He'll be short of a first down. Put his hand on the ground and tried to get his balance. Had he been able to, he might have been able to scoot for the first down. Virginia Tech leads 10 0. Tyler's first punt. Wobbly thing to the near sideline. He's got a bounce inside the 15 yard, inside the five yard line. Bounces to the four yard line. And the punt by Logan Tyler, about as good as you can get it. From the seven, the snap dropping to his own end zone. Jackson throws toward the far side of the field. It is a caught ball at the 34-yard line. Jackson with a good guy field. Three receivers to his right. Those on the near side. Got a bubble screen set up on this side. Cutting it back against the grain. Tackle missed at the 42, but then finished off at the 43-yard line. Matthews deep to return the punt of Oscar Bradburn. He'll call for a fair catch and make it at the 21-yard line. Receiver in motion. Here's the snap. Dropping the pass to the other side. Caught ball at the 25. Missed tackle to the 30. 29 to the 30. Running ladder across the field. It is Kalen Laborde. Laborde to the 45 to the 50 outside the numbers. And Laborde is brought down. Bulldog down in the Tech Hokie sideline. After a huge run after making the catch, Kalen Laborde touches the ball for the first time in his career and wows this crowd at Doe Campbell Stadium. It took a 37. Here's the snap. First, second down. Dropping to throw is Andre Francois. Throws the ball. Caught ball at the 30 yard. It's Keith Gavin inside the 25. Gavin, we're at number 89. Looks more like a tight end. He's our biggest receiver. And a dart thrown by DeAndre Francois. Shotgun formation on third and long. Play action fake. DeAndre Francois throws a rope toward the end. Oh, caught ball. No, oh, incomplete. I beg your pardon. Keith Gavin had it in his bitch, took a snap, and I thought he had the touchdown. A good one. The kick is airborne, and Ricky Aguayo has pulled it. pulled it wide to the left. One receiver's wide to the left, dropping to throw Jackson. Jackson has time. He's under pressure. He breaks loose. He is going to break the tackle. Runs for his life. Is dropped for a loss back on the 23-yard line. Need to reach the 34. Here, Jackson dropping back, looking upfield, throwing to the right side. It's an incomplete pass at the 28. Well covered by the Seminole secondary. Kyle Myers came up there and knocked it away. The snap, a good one. Oscar Bradburn, right toed kicker. High spiraling punt. Fair catch call for and made by Matthews at the 30 yard line. A 32 yard field goal. Here's the snap, third down. Dropping to throw Francois. Francois may run. He's going to get the ball away. Caught ball at first down at the 44 yard line. Great ad lib play by DeAndre Francois. Started to run, then put on the brakes and threw to Trey McKinney. Out of the shotgun formation. Here's the snap. Francois looks, passes the ball, caught ball uh, at the 48 yard line. Nice snag by Tamari and Terry. His first catch. As a Florida State receiver, the 48 got to reach the 44. Here's the snap. Handoff, running the ball up the gun. Frank can tackle the 40 to the 35 to the 30 yard line. Great run off right guard and a first down exchange by Jacquez Patrick. Here's the snap high. Francois passed to the left side. Caught ball. Bubble screen set up to the 30, to the 25, 20, 20 yard line. Garvin tackled to the 15, to the 10, to the 5, 3, 2, 1. Murray down to the one yard line. What a spin move of the 25 yard line. He got away from a tackler, and I thought he had six. Stack tight ends to the right side of the formation. High snap, bubble screen to Murray. Murray is going to be thrilled as he got it to the line of scrimmage. Here's the snap. Play action fake Francois. Looks Francois. Pumped out of the pocket. Running to his left. Puts on the brakes. Looks up here. Gets the pass away toward the end zone. It is thrown away. Got rid of the ball. Good snap. The spot. Here's Aguayo's kick. And the Seminoles have points on the board for the first time in 2018. For the north end zone. The snap. 
Drop it back to throw. Jackson Pass. Caught ball at the 35 yard line. Missed tackle at the 37. And still on his feet is Phil Patterson. The snap a good one. No pressure. Pass a caught ball. First down achieved right at the marker. Here's the snap. And Bradbourne is punting the ball. And DJ awaits, waits for the fair catch, and will make it at the nine yard line. Francois takes the snap, play action pass, gets the pass to the right side, caught by Trey McKitty. McKitty's going to run out to the 11-yard line, and that's it. In the end zone, step over, make a mistake. Ty, he's had it blocked. Block, punt, caught, touchdown, Virginia Tech. And the Virginia Tech Hokies block a Logan Tyler punt. It's 16-3. to Third of the 25-yard line, moving right. 3.56 to go. Drive action. Francois throws deep downfield. It is intercepted at the 30-yard line, intended for Keith Gavin and the catch on the interception made by freshman Caleb Farley. Here's the snap to Jackson. Outside pressure, gets the pass away. It is almost picked off and then through the hands of the intended receiver. Almost a pick by the Seminoles. From the Seminoles 22, FSU's going to run the ball. Nice run by Jacques Patrick stumbling ahead to the 35. Still will not go down. He's out to the 41 yard line. Four receivers to the right. And a diamond look. Pump fake, pump fake. Uh, DeAndre Francois throws down the near side. Caught ball at the 30 yard line. Tamari and Terry goes up and takes it away from two defenders. Great grab by Terry. The snap. Handoff and wanting the ball is Cam Akers. He will not get the first down. Stopped at the 20 yard line. This guy's offside on this left hand. the ball. Dropping the throw. Pass to the near side. Knocked down. He was offside. Knocked down and no flag thrown. Shotgun. Here's the snap. Drop back, draw play, they hand the ball off, and the Seminoles read the run and stuff it. Maybe the final play of the half bargain penalty, they'll run the pass, a screen over to the left side, caught by Murray, Murray to the 40, to the 45 yard line, spins off a tackle, and is dropped at the 48, and that'll be the final play of the first half. Work ahead, and the Florida State Seminoles trailing the uh, Virginia Tech Hokies 17 to three. So 17-3 Virginia Tech at half, Coach. But, you know, really you look at it, there's a blocked punt in there. That's given away seven points. There's a missed field goal. There's a missed opportunity in the red zone. You, you had outgained Virginia Tech. It felt like the momentum, uh, had you been able to punch one in, really, at least at, at best case it would have been, or worst case it would have been even, but it felt like almost on Florida State's side. Oh, it, it did for a while there. Again, we moved the ball. We did some good things, and then we stubbed our toe either with a penalty there on first down or, or a turnover. You know, I know that first drive we had, um, just three plays and we turned the ball over, gave them short field position and again against a good football team and, and for us being a young football team, you, you want to get momentum, you want to start fast and allow your guys to get some um, energy and momentum going and, and we didn't do that and, and we had opportunity to um, and we didn't take advantage of it. The run game, it was a challenge all night. Was it something in particular that Virginia Tech was doing because you just couldn't get that on track? But you, were, you, were, uh, you weren't winning first down. Mm -hmm. I think um, it was more what we wasn't doing um, than what they were doing. I mean, they were lining up like we knew they were going to line up. And um, again, it's one guy here and there uh, that made a mistake. And, and we as coaches got to do a better job of recognizing that and, and making sure our guys don't continue to make that mistake. And again, it, in that game, so many people took turn to make mistake, coaches and all. 17-3, the result uh, for Virginia Tech at the half. Second half highlights still to come. Stay with us here on Inside Center.
second half still to come at Doe Campbell Stadium. And Coach, you get the ball here to start the second half. 17-3, as we know, what, what did you say to the team to try and settle them down and, and get them, and, and maybe focus wasn't the issue, but just to get them dialed in to, to get back in this thing? Well, I told the guys, um, again, we have another half. We, we didn't play well. Um, we talked about the mistakes that we made, and if we don't make those mistakes, how the game can be different. Now we just got to go out and, and try to improve um, from the first half and not make those mistakes that we did. And unfortunately, first play, we did the same thing. And again, um, Guys not locked into their assignments uh, was, was, was critical, missed assignments and, and, and technique. Little things that can be corrected and, um, and that will get corrected. And, but um, I thought those things hurt us more than anything, just the little minimal mistakes. Let's go ahead and take a look at the second half highlights from Virginia Tech and Florida State. kick to begin the second half. It's going to be a deep kick and will not be returned by LeBourne. He'll take a knee five yards deep. The mark to make is the 35. Francois dropping, looking, under pressure. This pass away. Caught ball, juggled and caught right on the 30, but short of the first down. Hokies with a 17-3 lead. The snap, Jackson looks a little fired on a caught ball at the 35-yard line. Great grab on a slant route to the middle of the field by Damon Hazelden. Here's the snap to Jackson. Hands the ball off at a nice hole. Tackle day inside the 30-yard line. McLeese from the Seminole 27. A high snap. Josh Jackson running back and will dive on the football at the 42-yard line. Jackson takes the snap and looks over the middle. Looks to his left. Under pressure. Under pressure. And he's going to be sacked at the Seminole 47-yard line. Brian Burns gets his second sack of the game. That was just relentless pursuit by number 99, and it looked like Jackson was going to find just enough time to throw a pass upfield and avoid the sack. Could not do it. Close to the 23. Here is the snap from his own end zone. Francois looks, looks, looks. Throws a pass, and it's incomplete. Threw it to the far sideline. Well short of the intended receiver. Receivers to the right, one left. Here's the snap. Play action fake. Dropping back. Pressure coming. He'll be sacked in the backfield. Another sack by the Seminoles back at the 48-yard line. Sacks here in the third quarter. Hokies look to the sideline. Will face third down and long. Third down 18. Got to reach the 30. Here's the snap. Hand off. They'll run a draw play. Tackle from behind. Spinning off a tackle to the 40 yard line. Get it back to the original line of scrimmage. The 10 yard line. Other shotgun. Inside hand off. Florida State gets the ball to Cam Akers. There's just nowhere to go. Two linebackers and nickel defense. High snap. Caught by Francois. Looks up the Francois. Flushed. He falls down to the two yard line. Ran over the back of a guy blocking for it. After the punter, one guy back to return. Here's the snap. And Tyler got the kick away, and there's a collision. No flag thrown. No flag? Are you Caught kidding ball me? ball by Carroll. Uh, uh, DJ across the 50 to the 20 to the 15 yard line or close to it. And here's the snap, and he'll roll to his right. Looks toward his right. Throws toward his right. Caught ball at the 15 yard line. Down the far side, outside the numbers. It is Grimsley, and Grimsley will be tackled at the nine yard line. Blitz threatened by the Knowles. Here's the snap. They'll feed the ball up the gut. They go and they get the first down. Needed three. Jackson slaps his hands, gets the snap, feeds the ball, passes the ball to the right side. It is caught ball, touchdown Chris Virginia, but a shove, I think, on the receiver. Well, the Knowles needed a break, and they get one there, a 15-yard penalty for offensive pass interference. Sends a tight end in motion, takes the snap, looks up the middle, looks up the field, throws the ball to uh, Lotho, caught on the 10-yard line. Here's the snap handoff to Peoples to the five yard line. He's going to get to the three, two, one, and he is close. Did he get it in? He did not get it in. A half yard away. Here's the snap, feed the ball. Peoples tries to submarine his way in. Did he get in? I don't think so. The officials say he did not. Goal line stand number one yeah. in 2018. Huge. Big Demarcus Christmas. A big guy in the middle. And the Hokies from point blank range cannot. Score on that seminal D since 87. Here's the snap. First play of the fourth quarter. Deep in his own end zone. Going downfield. It is a long pass. It is overthrown. Flying down the near sideline. The ball passes over the outstretched fingertips of George Campbell. He will snap the ball. Shotgun. Here comes pressure. And Francois gets the pass away. It is caught ball by Jacques Patrick. He'll be nailed at the five yard line. Will not get the first down. Jackson in the shotgun, hands the ball off of the Jets, sweep, they got a little, oh, ball, 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 ball down the far sideline, out of bounds of the Virginia Tech territory in their bench area. Boy, what a hit. Florida State gets a big defensive play. That'll bring up third down and 11. 
claps the hands, gets the snap. Jackson looking, looking, looking under pressure by Burns. May have gotten away with the sack. Some of those go for the sack. He throws the ball upfield, caught on the 40 yard line. Taco made out of bounds at the Seminole 37. First down, 10 moving left, the snap. Francois hands the ball off. Akers running near side, made one guy. He breaks the tackle, 20. He's to the 30 yard line. Akers to the 40, Akers to the 50, Akers to the 40, Akers to the 30, Akers to the 20. Still going to the 15, to the 10, to the three, five yard line. Cam Akers with the biggest play of the season so far. The ball is down at the seven yard line. I thought he got it inside the five. From the nine yard line to the seven of the Hokies, the biggest play by far. Clock will stop with 11.36. A tight end to the right edge. Inside play action fake. Francois throws it past the right side. Caught ball and a tackle made to the 10. We lose yardage. Oh, you got three running backs in there. Here's the snap. Hey, Cam Akers corner. We fumble the football. It's loose. Diving on the football. Cam Akers fumble the ball. And the Hokies say they've come up with it. Let's see. Well, and they it did. will be Virginia Tech football. Nothing on that drive after an 84-yard run, the biggest play of the season, the biggest play of the game by either team. 9.49 to go, Hokies take over. Three-yard line, moving right, second down and a long one. With the football, a run by the quarterback, Josh Jackson. He's got more than what he needed. Takes the snap, play action fake, rolling to his left, throws the ball, a little punt, a little pass. Yeah, caught ball down the far side, outside the numbers, to midfield and run out of bounds on the Hokie sideline. Third down and seven. Here's the snap, rolling pocket, rolling, rolling. Josh Jackson looking under pressure. Gets the foul, caught ball. First down at the 40-yard line. And Eric Kuma, he has still on his feet. He's to the 30, to the 20-yard line, to the 10-yard line. Touchdown, Virginia Tech. Eric Kuma and the Hokies are running away with this when it's 23 to three. Five-yard drive, here is the kickoff. We've not had a chance to return a kick tonight. And Kalen the Bourne will feel four yards deep. He go down the far side. Line, cuts it back to the 10, to the 50. Spins off a tackle to the 20. He's out to the 25-yard line. How about a shotgun formation? Francois takes the snap. They know he's going to have to throw. Throws it over to the caught ball by Jock West Patrick at the 30-yard line. All ready to go to work. Everly snaps out of the shotgun. Pressure coming. Delay blitz. Passed outfield. It is intercepted. Picked off at the 38-yard line. Francois felt heat coming. Got rid of the ball. And it's picked off by Caleb Farley. Josh Jackson takes the snap, hands the ball off. They'll run it right up again. There's a fumble football. It's loose. It's on the deck and diving for it. I think Josh Jackson recovered. Boy, that was a vicious tackle. Not scored. Go after the block punt. Cannot get to it. And the kick will be fair caught at the 20-yard line by D.J. Matthews. And goes to the right empty backfield for Francois. Looks to the right, fires the ball, batted down. And it is intercepted by a defensive lineman. The Hokies with salt in the wound. And the Seminoles will go back to the drawing boards, regroup on a short week, and get ready for Sanford. So Virginia Tech gets the win. Coach, one thing we didn't talk about, the, the field position was really tilted heavily in favor of Virginia Tech. And I know that handicaps uh, to a large degree uh, you know, what your offensive playbook looks like. I mean, how much was that a factor? Because you were backed against your goal line most of that second half. I was, it was critical. It's always critical in the ball game. And like you say, play calling wise, it get a little challenging when, you, when you're backed up, Eric. But um, again, we got to find a way to make a play. You know, that's part of it, our guys. Um, it's critical when you're down there to at least get two first downs so you can change the field position. And um, we, were we wasn't able to do that there. Um, and, and again, for the most part, we stayed backed up in our end zone and, and because we couldn't get first downs that we needed. We'll have uh, more to come. Stay with us. Florida State has to turn the page and get ready for Sanford. We'll talk about that matchup when we return here on Inside Center of Football. Watch out, my friends. I'm older. Higgs, I'm back again. You can double me up on every play. It won't matter. Can't keep me away. When the ball is snapped, I'm off the line. Into the trenches where I will grind. Stay out of my way. I'm taking no flag. Just want to kick back doing a Seminole rap. Running backs out of the eye set. No, this is Kyle Morris back in there now. He'll drop back to Phil. Gets the swing pass. It is going to be picked off. Intercepted to the five. Into the wall and run by. Touchdown, Florida State. Odell Higgins picks it off. 
It was Odell Higgins with a touchdown. His first is a Seminole, and he's a happy man. Welcome into Inside the Headset. I'm Catherine Phillips alongside one of the most beloved men at Florida State, Coach Odell Higgins. Coach, you played at Florida State. You've been on the coaching staff for 25 years. What has it been like coaching under three different head coaches now? <laughs> well, you know, every every one of them have different styles, but um, I tell you, Coach Tagger, he's bringing back the Florida State way, and that's what I like about it. And, and, uh, and also, he understands a lot about Florida State University. In coaching under one of the greats, obviously, Bobby Bowden, and then you saw Jimbo Fisher and now Coach Taggart, I imagine seeing all of those styles has molded you into a coach you want to be and made you realize how you want to do things. Oh, yes. Coach Bowden always talked about it, being yourself and being authentic. And also learning you learn something from everybody that you coach with and somebody that's you coaching for you. And make sure you're never too stubborn to learn. That's one thing I've got from Coach Bowden. And every coach I've coached with or coached for, I'm learning something from each one of them. All of them have different styles. So in all of those styles and all of those lessons, I imagine a lot of them came from Coach Bowden. What's one of the biggest things that you've learned? Well, being yourself, being authentic, and, and being loyal, doing your job, doing being the best you can be at your job. I learned that from him. He always used to say, you're, you're on your job, you be the best, the best person that you can be on your job. You mentioned the loyalty, and a lot of people will say, there is no one more Florida State than Odell Higgins. What is it about this place that has made you want to stay here your entire career? Well. First of all, Florida State gave me an opportunity to grow as a young man, get my education, and being a coach here. And I love my university, and a lot of people say, well, you had different job opportunities here in the NFL and other colleges. What's better? You look at it, you, you get in certain situations, people try to offer you jobs, and, and it's not as good as the job is at Florida State being an assistant. This is home for me, and I love my school. And this school has done a lot for me as a man, as a young man and as a man. So therefore, I feel I owe Florida State a lot. And a lot of people tell me, man, you've done this and did this for 25 years. These kids here, I owe it to them to be the best man I possibly can be. When kids come here and say, hey, coach, I'm coming here to Florida State, to this school, and so you can coach me, I owe it to them kids. You've put a lot of those guys in the league. Andre Wadsworth, Travis Johnson, <laughs> Corey Simon. The list goes on and on. What's your philosophy as far as helping to mold these young guys into NFL talent? First, God, family, growing as a young man, and then football. Now, growing as a young man, also academics. I don't want people to think just academics is very important. But those things right there are very important to me as a man seeing a kid grow. What's one thing that people may not know about Odell Higgins that you would want them to know? I'm serious about this. People say you're being too humble. In my coaching career, in my career at Florida State University, I don't want to be known as a great coach, a great recruiter. I want people to know me as a great person, somebody that's a giver, somebody that's helping people. I talked to Derek Naughty after last year's ULM win, and he told me that not only do you bleed the garnet and gold, he said that you will be cremated in Florida State. <laughs> Is there accuracy to that statement? Uh, hey, I don't want to talk about that. I have a <laughs> lot of life left. But no, it just, it just I, I, I love the university, and I don't know, it was meant to be me to come here as a student athlete, as a coach. Some things you can explain, but some things you can't explain. I don't know what it is. God gave me this opportunity and I'm living it to most of my life and making sure I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. Right. Well, thank you so much for your time. Thank you very much. Hi, I'm Kendall Herman, and I'm a student assistant for the Sports Nutrition Department here at Florida State University. Thanks to my Bright Future scholarship, I'm able to dedicate all of my free time to the athletics department.
completely on a volunteer basis. This opportunity has allowed me to work alongside of our director of sports nutrition, where I'm not only having fun on the sidelines, but I'm also learning a lot of valuable skills for my future career as a sports dietitian. I could not be more proud to do the work that I do, and I want to thank the Florida Lottery for funding my bright future. But well, first of all, men, it's, it's really an honor. When Coach Tackett asked me to come in, be a part of you guys' Mindset Monday, an opportunity uh, to give of myself back to you guys in a different form, in a different manner. Because you guys are getting some things, man, that no other people can get. But you gotta transform that to your family members. Man, you gotta teach them how to grind, that they don't even know how to grind. You gotta show them what it's like to grind. You gotta show them what it's, over, what it's like to overcome something. Man, you think your life tough, man? Man, wake up at 5 a.m., man, go through these workouts. For me, that alarm went off at 7 o'clock, bam, I never hit the snooze button. I never gave myself a choice, man, not to be decommitted. A commitment must be made. Don't give yourself a choice, man, to doubt the commitment. If you commit to doing something, do it. You got to find a way, man, to take this outside and show others, whether it's your family, whether it's your friends. Hell, it can even be amongst each other. Because it's gonna come a time, man, when that stuff that you learning here gonna get called out. Gonna get called out, you gonna have to show it. That resiliency, man, that never quit. Those two words, do something. I can't sit here, man, and predict the future for you guys, but it's gonna be a point next season, man, it's gonna be a price to be paid. What price you gonna pay? Everybody gonna pay it, not just the leader. Believe that, it's not just the leader. Everybody gonna have a chance, man, to step up to the plate and pay a price. You just gotta be willing to do it. But you're gonna be better prepared to pay that price because you made a commitment and you got a plan laid. And football, man, the beautiful thing about it, you don't have to pay the price by yourself. Man, you got your brothers to lean on. Today's X's and O's segment is presented by Nissan, proud supporter of college athletics. Shop ChooseNissan.com, innovation that excites. Jackson ready to go at quarterback, a half yard away. Here's the snap, feed the ball. Peoples tries to submarine his way in. Did he get in? I don't think so. The officials say he did not. Goal line stand number one yeah. in 2018, huge. Today's X's and O's segment, we're looking at the goal line stand versus Virginia Tech. If you look here, Virginia Tech is running the inside zone, and what they like to try to do is block down in gaps. This guy's going to come down for this gap for the linebacker. He's coming down for the defensive tackle. This tight end is coming down for 20, and this guy would like to try to block him off so the tailback can find a crease through there. What Coach Barnett had our defensive tackle do, he looped out, which the, the tackle missed him. And he did a great job of getting back inside because the guy couldn't block him and made a um, good stop in the back. You see Christmas step out and get back in, which was great for us there. And I thought what a big part of it, not only did he held on, and his teammates came in, and, and you see number 14, Kyle Myers, come in and grab his legs to keep him out of the end zone. Was a great, a great opportunity for us here. Great play by our defense. I think goal line stands, attitude, and our guys did a great job down there in keeping them out of the end zone. And, um, we got to continue to do that. And that's today's X and O segment. The Look Ahead is presented by Florida Farm Bureau Insurance. Register to win a football fantasy experience at KnowlesContest.com. Welcome back to Inside Seminole Football. Coach, I use the phrase, turn the page. I mean, win or lose, that's what you have to do after every game, especially, and I know you refer to it as a 24-hour rule, but in a shortened week, you don't even really have 24 hours. You've got to get to work on Sanford. Oh, absolutely. And, and um, again, Sanford's not going to feel sorry for us, so we got to get back to work. And um, for us as coaches, make sure we, we find the things that we did wrong and get it to our guys so we can make those mistakes. I make those corrections from those mistakes and, and get ready for the Sanford game. And, and I guess that's probably a good thing, having a short week when you have a game like we did um, this past week, um, is to get back and play play again. And I know our guys will be ready to play. Yeah, you don't have to. Uh, you, you, can, you can turn that page more quickly. How difficult is it, though, on the body, on the legs, to, to, 
to have the condensed schedule and work week that you'll have this week? Well, it's challenging because the guys, they kind of get in a routine each and every week. And, and this, this week, because we had to give them a day off, uh, they don't have as much time to pre prepare. And um, so we got to be smart as coaches on what we ask them to do and make sure we get enough work in to prepare us for Saturday. Saturday's game, a 7:20 kick. So again, under the lights at Doe Campbell Stadium. We'll come back and get some final thoughts from Coach Taggart right after this on Inside Seminole Football. Welcome into Garnet and Gold Grub, presented by Tico People's Gas. I'm Katherine Phillips, alongside award-winning chef Travis Johnson, and he's going to walk us through a delicious tailgate recipe today. Chef, what do you have? Today we're going to make a southern classic, and personally one of my favorites, chicken and waffles. That's a lot of people's favorite. I know, and what's <laughs> awesome about chicken and waffles on game day is you can enjoy it any time during the day. Breakfast, afternoon, late dinner snack. We're excited. Should yeah. we get started? Let's get started. Okay, so we started out, uh, the chicken we're working with today is an eight piece cut. So we have breast, leg, thigh, and wing. And we start out by uh, marinating that in some dry spices. Okay. So I like to use a combination of spices with garlic and onion powder and a little bit of cumin, uh, black pepper, salt, paprika, and chili powder. And I do a dry rub, let it sit for probably about an hour or two. And then I uh, drop it into buttermilk and it's been sitting for 24 hours overnight. And this is where it gets a lot of its flavor. And now we're at the point where we need to dredge it in some seasoned flour and then get ready to fry it. Okay. So let's get started. So as we dredge the chicken, and you can start to smell some of the aromatics it's, there coming yeah, off of the chicken. I smell it already. You wanna coat it pretty evenly and uh, make sure that it's good and covered. In the flour, I just lightly seasoned with a little cracked black pepper and some kosher salt. And we'll bring the oil up to between 375 and 400 degrees for frying today. Okay. Now I'm gonna start by uh, cooking the breast and the thigh, put those in first, because they're gonna take the longest. So you're using natural gas, what are some of the benefits of that? Some of the benefits of natural gas is really being able to control the heat. Uh, for an application like this, where we wanna get the oil uh, pretty hot pretty quickly in, in order to, to fry the chicken, I'm able to raise that temperature up, then also regulate it as we're cooking. We're gonna go ahead and let that cook. It'll cook for about seven or eight minutes on this side, and then we'll flip it over on the other side, and it'll be ready to go. Awesome. Wow, you can really start to smell the chicken. You really can. See, now let's take a look. See how it's browning and golden and crisp on that back side? Oh, that looks awesome. Oh my God. Pull our waffle. I like to use like, uh, this is more like a Belgian waffle style. So it's a little bit thicker and just tastes wonderful. All right. So as this chicken finishes up, uh, as we take it out of the grease, always want to get a, a pan with some just some paper towels. Works really good uh, to get some of the excess grease off before we serve it. And look at that. That looks so good. That looks like lunch. <laughs> All right, so we have our waffles. We have our Belgian waffles that came out. Uh, chicken, we'll go here with one of the legs and the thigh. And then we'll come back and we prepared some whipped Tabasco honey butter. And this is just incredible. We're gonna smear this on our waffle. And what makes this even better is we're gonna finish this with the um, uh, vanilla maple syrup. And it's okay to go over the chicken with the syrup as well. Oh my gosh. Should we try? Let's do it. All right. Looks really good. Get a little bit of the waffle in there and I'm just gonna Now that is good hunting chicken and waffles. It's so good, so good. Well, for more information on how you can incorporate natural gas at home, at your business, or at your next tailgate event, log on to peoplesgas.com slash cooking. Coach, I know you'll be busy getting ready for Sanford this week, obviously, but uh, reflecting back a little bit further, uh, you know, it's typical, we always focus on the offense, but the defense, the, the, the opening drive, Virginia Tech went 10 plays, 75 yards, and then there was one with missed tackles at the end, but in between, I think there was seven straight punts forced at one point. It seemed like Harlan Barnett's crew really settled down and into that game. They did, he did a great job, and I tell you what, I was really impressed with on the goal line stand to get down there. We preached that a lot, and they played with attitude, and kept them out of the end zone was very critical 
on that drive, but it said a lot about our defense and the way that Coach Barnett had those guys playing over there. So that was really good. Yeah, not just the goal line stand. I mean, for the same reason you were backed up because of field position. I mean, Virginia Tech had a plus opportunity much of that second half, and, and mm -hmm. the defense uh, rose to the occasion time and again. They did, and, and that says a lot about our guys with a lot of new guys in there playing. Um, and for again, for them to go out and play the way they did uh, says a lot about what we can be and if we can get things right. When we get things right on the offense side of the ball, I think uh, we'll see a, a really good football team. I know you'll look at the tape and you'll work through those mistakes, but from a broad overview standpoint, what's the what's the biggest thing you want to see from your team? Uh, you know, as they get ready for Sanford this week. Well, just um, improve on those those minimal mistakes, and and not just our players, but coaches as well. There was a lot of mistakes in in the ball game, and um, I think that's typical when you have your first ball game with new people and new new kids, new system, and uh, but we can't do it when it comes to turnovers. And, so we got to take care of the football, you know, and, and I think that's a big part of it. We take care of the football, we have a better chance. Sounds good. We'll see you at Doe Campbell Stadium this Saturday night, and we'll see you next week right here on Inside Seminole Football. Inside Seminole Football has been brought to you by the Florida Lottery, over 30 billion and counting to education. Just imagine. The energy saving conservation programs of Tico People's Gas. Real Coca-Cola taste with zero sugar and zero calories. Coca-Cola Zero Sugar, taste the feeling. And by Nick's Toggery, provider of Coach Taggart's wardrobe.